Hey everybody, welcome to another Photoshop CS6 tutorial. I'm your host, Buddy Blackford. Today we're going to be learning about a new layer style called a drop shadow. We're going to learn how to create it and modify it, and I'm going to go over the different properties with you that you can modify and adjust. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Right now I just have a text layer, and then I have a shape layer. And I could apply the drop shadow effect to either of these. So um, first, I'm just going to start with the shape layer, or with yeah, I'll just start with the shape layer. It doesn't matter which one I start with actually. So I'm going to double click on it, and it's going to bring up the layer styles. Now you can also get to the layer styles by clicking on this FX button down here, um, or you can just double click like I did. So now um, I've got the layer styles, and I want to go to drop shadow, which is down here at the bottom because this is the first one we're going to learn about. So if I click on it and have the check box clicked, it's going to apply the drop shadow. And it's going to apply it to the edges of the object at, an, at a light angle that um, we specify within the, within the uh, properties here. Now I'll just go ahead and zoom in on the, this real quick. I'm going to cancel out real quick and zoom in on this so we can see it a little better. All right, drop shadow. There we go. Looks like I'm zoomed in too far. Oh well. Um, so we've got our blend mode here, um, which is our blending modes. And it's always set on to multiply it as default, and that's fine. You can leave it at that. Here you can pick your color. And usually for drop shadows, you want to use a off black color. We've got our opacity here, which um, does the transparency of it, of the drop shadow, as you can see like that. Here is our angle, and whatever angle we put at is going to simulate where light is coming from. So if I move the angle, the drop shadow, uh, the, the angle of the drop shadow is um, opposite of the angle that you put on here. So if I want the drop shadow to be on the bottom right, you want to put the angle to the top left. It's um, basically simulating where the sun is coming from. The next checkbox here is called use global light. And um, if you use a global light, it's going to affect everything in your project that has a drop shadow. So that way all your drop shadows are um, coming from the same angle. We've got our distance here. And if I increase that, you can see that the distance from the actual um, object that you're putting the layer style on, um, that's the distance. And you can see that how the drop shadow actually looks if you increase the distance. Um, the transparent areas in my object, you can see them in the drop shadow as well. So I'll just move this back to somewhere a little closer so it looks a little more real. Uh, we've got our spread here, which is going to increase the size. Um, we've got our size, um, which is also going to increase the size, but it kind of like fades it out and everything like that. There's a really huge thunderstorm going on right now or something. It's really, really loud out there. And uh, I just looked outside. It's not actually thunderstorming. It's snowing and the wind is blowing really, really hard. Which really sucks because that's basically the first snow of the year. And the snow lasts a long time where I live, which kind of sucks. But let's get back on to our layer styles. Now we can come down here into quality. So the first one we've got here is uh, contour. And what contour is, it's a like a mathematical process that Photoshop has to determine the brightness of the shadow at uh, like different levels. So let me put the spread or the size back down to something manageable like that. Then I'll go to my contour and if I change it, you can see how it uh, is a little different. But mainly, most of the time you wanna use these two here on the left. They're usually the best ones because they look the most real. We got anti-alias here to uh, have a visually smooth drop shadow. You can't really tell that much when you're using it on here. Um, we've got noise, and you can go from zero to 100 on this. And it just gives like a random shift in the colors of your drop shadow. 
and it like adds like a speckling noisy kind of effect and then the last uh, thing that we got here is a uh, lair knocks out drop shadow checkbox and um, it basically creates a knockout in the underlying layers so that's how you use your drop shadow and I'll just uh, zoom out and that's what your drop shadow looks like on a shape and if I just throw it onto my text drop shadow that's what it would look like on some text so uh, that's what we got going on there and uh, that's pretty much it uh, for drop shadow I went over all the uh, different styles there um, if you want to see what it looks like all the time on as you're uh, messing with your different um, what are these called properties you want to make sure you have the preview button checked and that way you'll be able to see it but that's it, and that's all I wanted to show you. So hopefully you guys are masters of the drop shadow now. Um, a lot of times now in in uh, graphic design and other things, drop shadows aren't really used anymore. They're considered uh, a little tacky. So be sure to use your drop shadows with uh, some restraint and don't put them on everything. So just keep that little tip in mind. So thanks a lot for watching. Uh, see you guys in the next tutorial.